Hi everyone, this is Matthew Jennifer Cardiners, and I'm here with Tournament Theory Concepts Part 2. So you have to watch the first video, and it should make complete sense what we're talking about if you watch the first video and just jump right in here. So, denying equity. So, because stack depth is small, it's often possible to raise with hands that would not be strong enough to raise 100 big blinds deep. You just can't get to the river and truly hate life when you have top pair, good kicker, or second pair. The money has already gone in by that point. You need to get very comfortable trying to deny equity with a, again, doing a little quote thing with my hand, value hand, even if you don't want to be called or raised. You have to check raise top pair good kicker sometimes. You have to bet middle pair aggressively sometimes. So I've talked a lot about in other videos how even when you're raising a polarized range, a lot of the times the good part of the polarized range or the value hands still don't want action. It's a very common thing. That's even going to be more so the case when you're playing with small stack depth. So in a typical post-flop situation where you're 100 big blinds deep, it's not uncommon to see players raise like, you know, two pair sets and then more or less bluffs and draws on the flop with 100 big blind stack depth. Whereas as you get more shallow, you might still be raising, you know, two pairs and sets on the flop, but you also might start raising a lot more top pair good kicker stuff. Because again, like nothing really that bad can happen. There's not a lot of stack depth. Your opponent can't really three bet you very effectively on the flop. And if your opponent has an over pair and you have top pair good kicker and you're only 20 or 25 big blinds deep, you were going to get stacked either way. So you want to get more comfortable sort of lowering your standard for how strong a hand needs to be to value raise it as you get shallow. You can get a lot more aggressive because you want to deny your opponent the ability to realize his equity since the pot, even if the pot's small, it's already going to be a big pot relative to your stack depth. So yeah, just get comfortable trying to deny equity and raising weaker hands even if you really don't want to get called. And again, just for further clarification, when I say weaker hands, I still mean it's part of the good part of your polarized range. I just mean it's like, you know, a top pair without even top kicker rather than like a set or a two pair like you might be used to. All right. So now let's do a more difficult example. The clearest examples always make poker seem easier than it actually is. So let's try a tougher example with a less clear answer. A 15 big blind stack min raises on the button and you're in the big blind with a king seven off. The small blind folds. What do you do? Again, pause for a moment and think. And remember, we're assuming no ante. Call. Um, again, since we're shallow, even though our equity is very much not robust with king seven off, it's going to be really hard for our opponent to do much about it because there's just not enough stack depth to punish us when we do flop a pair. So this is a super straightforward call. Now the flop comes 8-7-3 with a flush draw. You check, villain bets 2.25 big blinds into a 4.5 big blind pot. What do you do? Pause for a moment and think. My thoughts? If we were 100 big blind deep, check calling king 7 off on a 8-7-3 board would be the easiest check call ever for me. I can't realistically imagine any villain I'd raise here against, so I would devote very little energy to this spot and focus on other tables. So what I mean by this is even if I was able to play on a site that allowed HUD, and I was playing on that site, I still would not look at my HUD and try to make my decision here because I only have so much focus and energy to go around. King 7 off with 100 big blinds deep on that board looks like such a straightforward call that I'm just calling against everyone and I'm focusing on other tables. But if we're only 15 big blinds deep preflop and villain bets 2.25 big blinds into a 4.5 big blind pot, after we call, the pot will be 9 big blinds with only 10.75 big blinds behind. What should we do now? And then again, why? Pause for a moment and ask yourself why you think it's a call or why you think it's a raise. It might not be that straightforward. Don't just pick the answer for where you think I'm going with the video. Try to justify why you do what you do.